Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in the 2011 MacBook Repair Saga. Uh, I've done many videos on this computer as you guys probably know, in fact I've got a whole playlist if you want to go ahead and check that out up in the cards. But today, in my last video, you guys probably saw that I got this thing up and running, it is working now, at least somewhat. Um, so today, I'm actually going to be upgrading this machine with... An SSD. I actually just got back from Best Buy. I was going to order an SSD from Amazon, actually the same one that I did in that $20 PC video, but I decided to pay a little bit extra to get one that I could get today and shoot this video today and to get this up and running right now. So that's exactly what I did. I ended up walking away with this PNY 120GB SATA SSD which is what we're going to be putting into this computer. Now, my plan is, and we're gonna see if this works, because I don't really see why it wouldn't, but my plan is to boot off of the hard drive that's already in here, that's again from my mid-2009 MacBook, and I'm gonna boot off of the recovery partition on that drive. And I'm going to then take this SSD, plug it into this USB adapter that I have right here, and I'm going to use that recovery partition to install a fresh copy of Mac OS X El Capitan onto this drive, which we're then going to upgrade to High Sierra, which is the um, latest version of Mac OS that this can support. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and cut open the package right here. I'm going to try and just use a, a screwdriver bit because, you know, that's how you should open packages. We're going to go ahead and slide it out. It's, again, very basic. It just comes in this box. You get the drive itself. You also get this um, piece of plastic with some... Oh, wow, I just dropped it. <laughs> with uh, some 3M adhesive strips on the back that I assume can be used for mounting of some kind. Um, or maybe just having a bracket on it, I guess. This also comes with a key for a Cronus True image, which I'm not going to show you guys, obviously, because it is a key um, that I may use at some point but it's nice that they include that so let's go ahead and take this drive right here i'm going to open up our um, two and a half inch to usb enclosure right here so all we got to do is just take our solid state drive run it along those rails there plug it in it plugs in really nicely then we're just going to take our enclosure cover slide that back on and i'm going to have to actually plug this in this one does not actually run off of the usb power itself it actually needs to be plugged in to the wall so we're going to go ahead and do that and what's nice about this is it actually um, has some usb ports it kind of acts as a usb hub as well so um, that comes in handy if you're using it on a computer maybe even like a newer mac that doesn't have as many usb ports so then we're going to go ahead and take our um, adapter cable here we're going to plug that into the side and then we're going to plug this drive into our MacBook, which I believe we're going to have to do on this side over here. So let me go ahead and do that. So like I said, the plan is to install El Capitan because that's just what is already on the mid-2009 MacBook's drive. And then I'm going to upgrade it to High Sierra. But I actually received, I actually just published the um, GPU bypass video and some comments are coming in from you guys saying that the tool might uh, not be working because there's multiple partitions on the drive. So that could definitely be a reason why that it wasn't booting, but I was just really confused because I was going in and following all those steps uh, one by one and it wasn't working. So my plan is to, uh, you know, hopefully with this fresh install that we do, it will yield us some better results. We're gonna obviously try to run that patch tool again. And here we are, we've booted into Mac OS Recovery. I've again zoomed in a little bit so you can see what we're actually doing just a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and use English for the main language. We're going to continue. So I believe this one right here is the, yep, 120 gigabyte unallocated. It's saying it's an AS media drive that might have something to do with just the enclosure that we're using. We're gonna go ahead and erase this disk here and we're gonna give it a name, Macintosh SSD. We're gonna use OS X Extended Journaled, and we're going to use the GUID partition map. Now that I think about it, the, I mean, High Sierra can run off of an APFS, an Apple File System drive, but I believe we can just convert this um, over to the Apple File System if we want to, but uh, just for now, since this is El Capitan, again, as I said, we're just gonna use OS X Extended Journal because you can't use the Apple File System in this uh, addition. So we're going to go ahead and erase that. 
So there we go, we have successfully erased the drive. We're gonna go ahead and click on done. And then what we're gonna do is just close out of disk utility. We're going to reinstall OS 10. And that should bring up the OS 10 installer where we can choose what destination we want. So here's the installer right here. We're gonna go ahead and click on continue. We will click on continue to verify the eligibility of the computer, which is interesting. Okay, click on agree. Click on agree once more. <laughs> and then we're going to choose Macintosh SSD and hit install. And oh, we got assigned sign to the app store. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that really quickly here. All right, so there we go. We have about two hours. Okay, it was three hours. Now it's down to two hours, one hour and 50 minutes. Okay, so it is going down, that is a good sign, because I did not want to wait here for three hours. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here, and I will come back once we are finished with this portion of the setup. Alright, welcome back. We have successfully rebooted the machine, and we are now at the setup wizard, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and choose our language, and we're going to not worry about transferring any information, because I do want to set this up as a brand new partition, you know, as a brand new, uh, fresh install, so... We're going to do continue, we're not going to bother with location services at the moment, and we're not going to sign in just now, we'll do that later on. We will agree to the terms and conditions that we have totally read before, and I'm going to go ahead and put in my username here, account name Michael, I'm not going to bother with a password at this time, because I guess we have to set a password, okay. Go ahead and hit continue to create the account. And we have frozen up for some reason. That is not a good sign. I literally can't do anything now. The machine literally just locked up. Oh yeah, okay. Literally just totally shut off. I, I did not pull the power or anything. Well, that is definitely odd. <laughs> All right, so we're on this screen again. I can still move the mouse around, but you can see that the creating account pinwheel has frozen there so uh oh there we go okay it just okay perfect <laughs> i was gonna say like let's not have a whole like another problem here so we are in the new york time zone so we'll go ahead and select that we will not send any info to apple and we will set up our mac so okay that was odd but at least it recovered <laughs> so here we go, booting into El Capitan, a fresh install uh, with all of our apps here. And now what we're going to do is, because we still have the internal hard drive still plugged in here, we're going to turn off this machine, I'm going to boot up, or I'm not going to boot up, I'm going to open it up, and we're going to swap out the hard drive. So let's go ahead and uh, shut down our computer here. So I did put all of these screws back in last night when I was done shooting that last video because I thought I wasn't gonna get this SSD for a while but uh, it worked out that I was able to get it uh, today so I'm gonna have to take off all of these screws again. So for some reason they put a star bit or a penelo bit on the hard drive screws it's not even the screws that open up the hard drive, it's just the, to take it off of the bracket, so I'm gonna have to get a special screwed uh, bit for that. There you have it, we've just upgraded this machine to a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. So I'm not gonna bother with putting the screws back on just yet, just in case something goes wrong, because you never know. Well, it looks like our issue may have come back, at least in terms of the GPU, because, um... Yeah, it just it just restarted again. Let's let, let's see if it does that again. But the good thing is I know how to fix it now. You just got to run that one command. I actually got a comment from somebody who said that um, the he he had mentioned that. Let me go ahead and pull it up here on my comments page. That whenever the NVRAM or the PRAM gets reset on this computer, which may have just happened, um, you'll have to go in and, and run that command again which is literally looks like what happens. So we're gonna hold Command S here to boot back into single user mode. So now that I think about it, we basically have to do everything that we just did on that old drive on this one now, because this is a fresh install of um, OS X. Those kext files are there, but there we go, it, it worked. So we'll go ahead and 
actually just restart again. All right, so here we are back in OS 10 utilities. We're going to open up the terminal and we're gonna type this wonderful command again. C-S-R-U-T-I-L-D-I-S-A-B-L-E, enter. Successfully disabled system integrity protection. Please restart the system. Okay, sounds good to me. We'll restart and look at that. That is just, that is beautiful. It is so fast. Okay, so we're on the network. We'll go ahead and open up Safari. Again, that looks, that is wonderful. And we'll run this and we got to go into our system preferences once again. All right, so we're going to change our preference to anywhere, allow from anywhere, and then we'll just run this again. Got to confirm once again that we want to open it. Now we hit next and check that out. System integrity protection is disabled. Perfect. So it does. So I guess it did have something to do with there being multiple partitions on the drive. So we'll click on next and it tells you what it's going to do. It's going to set the NVRAM variable, remove dedicated video card drivers and install launch daemon. So we'll go ahead and click next. We need to authenticate once again. So it's set the NVRAM variable. It's currently removing those text files. Now, because this is a fresh install, all, all of those text files were there. So um, it is gonna have to remove them, which is nice that it automatically does that for us. So there we go. We'll go ahead and click on next, finish, and then we just need to restart the machine for everything to take effect. Okay, so we just booted back up. I'll go ahead and type in my password again. And oh, well that's, whoa, what the heck? Well, that, that was weird. I don't know what that was about. Now, he had mentioned on his website that something about the brightness not working. Yeah, so you see that the brightness now doesn't, uh, doesn't it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so another downside is that sleep mode um, doesn't work anymore with this patch. So if I go ahead and shut the computer and I open it back up, you'll see that it didn't even go into sleep mode. It just, the, the, the screen stays on. So I think, I think even if you hit Yeah, even if you hit sleep, uh, the screen will not go off. Like if you turn on sleep mode, the 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 computer turn or like the keyboard turns off. But as soon as you, but you can see that the screen is still here. If, and if you try to move the mouse around, it won't move until you actually like press a key to wake it up from from sleep mode. The bottom line is, it does work. This machine is fully functional now, essentially, aside from those the, those two minor differences. And that is essentially going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video on this channel, which I do every single week. And be sure to drop me a comment letting me know if you guys have ever used this tool. Is this something that you uh, have experience with? Um, do you have any other methods of getting this 2011 MacBook to work? Be sure to let me know as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.